Christmas comedy. It's a choice of a new generation. So hold on to your hats and let's go. And playing Wipeout today, Leon Wilder from Boreham Wood. My name is Leon and I was a contestant on Bob Monkhouse's Wipeout. So let's meet the star of the show, Bob Monkhouse. They blindfolded me and the other contestants and took us to a studio out of town. The producer told us all to take our clothes off. Then Monkhouse came in and tried to disorientate us with loud music and beatings. They chained a radiator to my throat. Uh, jewelry salesman? Yes. Yeah. You're very disorientated. Before I went on set, Wipeout's head of security pissed on my leg. <laughs> the are standing, but they couldn't have sat even if they wanted to. Not after a session with Bob and his funny finger puppet. <laughs> In between takes, Monkhouse threatened to cut off my cock with an axe. This one. At the end of it, they threw me down a flight of stairs and shouted, You lose, you greed-faced golem monster. They bundled me into a car and I was dumped outside a travel lodge. Your minute to win it begins now. I won £50. <laughs> Hello, welcome to GASH. Uh, the day Donald Rumsfeld entered Iraq to be greeted by cheering crowds of shock protesters. Uh, the day also that the World Health Organization said it's now all right to fly into Toronto, though they still haven't come up with a, a reason why. And uh, the day also when Tory leader Ian Duncan Smith gave an interview in which he said, we are going to win the next election. I absolutely believe that. I'm not bullshitting. <laughs> Well, he actually compounded the problem by saying that on the asylum seeker issue, he wanted to dissociate himself from the BNP, uh, which is difficult given he's now a swearing skinhead. <laughs> uh, Dominic and uh, Nick Wilty and Dominic Holland are, are with us this evening. Uh, oh, any Monday. stories that, that are particularly bothering your brain tonight? Big stories. There's big, uh, big ones. Stories, but yeah. let's start with fish. Oh yes. Fish. Well, apparently, is that there's a scientific <laughs> experiment that's confirmed yeah. that in the matter of angling, fish feel pain. Right. Okay, now, which is all, you know, not a good thing. Obviously, you don't want fish to be sore. No. <laughs> but I was thinking. I do, that, actually. Never mind the fish. Yeah. What about the pain of the bait? Oh, my God. What about, think about the worm. Yeah. The worm gets a hook through its head, eaten alive. That's got to hurt. <laughs> you'd at least have a decency to cut it in half so one bit of that worm can lead a decent life, couldn't you? <laughs> I'm not actually up to speed on this story because I was busy, you know, preparing a, a hilarious item the, about private fish. funding of uh, hospitals. <laughs> but uh, obviously, we'll lead on this one. They've done They've an experiment, right? So scientists. So this is the this is the. They've got bee venom, and bee venom. Bee well, venom. They're bees injecting it. Are the natural uh, prey of fish, as we all know. Right. <laughs> right. So hang on. So a scientist who was determined. Obviously, to... with time on his hands. Yeah. Wanted thought thought the best thing in the world to do was to squeeze the contents of a bee's ass into a fish's face. <laughs> and because the fish didn't like it, he's now saying fishing's wrong. Right. Has, has anyone done any tests on scientists? <laughs> <laughs> they don't like fish. <laughs> I saw a programme last night when they were feeding insects to celebrities and, um, in the jungle. Very and, good programme. Uh, good idea, There yeah. were no signs of intelligence there as well. <laughs> <laughs> Although Daniela's now cracked up, isn't she? Has she? Oh, which which we knew that anyway, didn't we? Just, just think how many bees you could get up Dan Daniela's nostrils up. <laughs> Not as many now that she's been fixed. Oh, she's been fi oh, now she, she can just get the two. Because she, she was mono nostril for some time though, wasn't she? Oh, shit. <laughs> which makes every man in the room think, would you? <laughs> now, there's just only about 40 minutes or so uh, of the month long gun amnesty to go. So really, if you still want to hand in a gun and haven't done so, there's really only time to text it in. Um, <laughs> so far, people have handed in some guns, uh, all of the So Solid crew, and uh, someone's actually handed in an inner city. What I'd like to see, you know, somebody just walks in there and just plonks a bit of wood down on the police desk and I say, what say, so it's chair leg. Yeah, but you thought it was a gun when my uncle carried it, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why the, the amnesty is going to end. It, 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 they say it's work, they've got 17,000 yeah. guns given in. Yeah. So then why should it end? Why shouldn't they just continue with it, like sort of the LA carpet sale? <laughs> <laughs> Seems a good idea to have an amnesty because um, obviously they're giving in guns, but I figure though, if you're a serious criminal, you're not going to want to give in your gun that works. No. 
just going to give in your crappy gun that doesn't work. His guns are like mobiles, they've upgraded, haven't they? <laughs> they've all now got really small guns that take photos of people. <laughs> Embarrassed by your old gun. <laughs> Yeah, big fat gun, a little yeah. tiny one. Won't work on the underground. Yeah. <laughs> we've just heard, actually, that uh, we've just heard someone has handed in cannon and ball. <laughs> uh, uh, also, I've just heard that some yardies are handing in their bullets one by one by firing them into police stations. <laughs> I enjoy being the Foreign Secretary. I am in many ways like Tarzan, the very tall and muscular man who was raised by apes. The world is my jungle and important issues of international relations are the vines on which I swing. <laughs> I want to talk now about the whole club versus country issue. Uh, Sven Joran Eriksson is meeting uh, Premier managers today to try and persuade them to release players for international matches. And uh, suddenly denying British citizenship to foreigners with fantastic ball skills doesn't seem like a good idea, does it? See, I, 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 see, I don't know anything them. about football. You know, I don't follow it at all. But, I mean, I live, what, a stone throw from Millwall football ground. And I know that because of the stones. <laughs> <laughs> if we widen it, then, the whole question of patriotism and... Um, what you would do for your country. I mean, would you fight for your country? Would I fight for my country? Yeah. Um, yes, I think I would, yeah. If they were going to do something awful, like, you know, make Silla Black Prime Minister. <laughs> That's I'd a coup, though, country. isn't it? Although we can't have a war for 18 months now, I'm told. Uh, yes, we're hard pushed. So actually, now, in the next 18 months, I would well, fight for my country. Why is that? Why can't we have a war for 18 months? <laughs> <laughs> There's be no war for 18 months, so I'm, I'm yeah, up It's official. It. Oh, it's official. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got yeah. no weapons. Wars Let's, have an 18 month no gestation yeah. period. Did you not know that? <laughs> They've been experimenting in wars by injecting bee stings <laughs> taken out of scientists' arses and... I don't know what I'm talking about. But, you know, you, but you've actually... You, I mean, you used to be... In the uh, army. In the army. Uh, yeah, I've actually so fought and died for my country, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, yeah, I was, I was in the Falklands War and... Yeah. Uh, you know, because, uh, you know, when you hear these debates going on, sometimes they say, you know, what about the war on drugs? And I'll say, well, we tried that in 82. We took whatever was going and it still didn't work. <laughs> Would you fight for your country? Um, I, I would fight for my country. Um, Which be in Italy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or Scotland. Or Scotland. <laughs> Come on. I, I tell you what, I would fight for most of my country. What, just not uh, England? Because I, I had a particularly bad experience doing a live show in Plymouth once. And <laughs> I don't really want to defend that part of the world. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we, thought it, uh, we thought with the, the club versus country issue, it, it's so difficult to resolve that we'd put it to the people to decide with the voice of you, the public, the viewer, in the street of decision of your opinion. Basically, we asked what you all thought of it. <laughs> <laughs> if we're talking sandwiches, uh, it would have to be club. Uh, there isn't a country sandwich. I wouldn't fight for my country, but then I'm Swiss. If we're talking bumpkins, it would have to be country, uh, because there isn't like a, a club bumpkin. Put it this way. I wouldn't fight Alex Ferguson, but I'd happily punch Sven Goran Eriksson in his big pancakey face. Okay, more bad news for the uh, BNP today. They're trying to clean up their image, uh, distancing themselves from the Nazi Party uh, because they lost. Um, <laughs> but today it was also revealed that at least nine BNP candidates in tomorrow's local elections have criminal records. So it seems the new face of the BNP is just like the old face but with a spider tattoo surgically removed. <laughs> um, which takes us back to a sort of discussion of country, really, and nationality. Mm, the BNP, yeah, yeah. Not, not a very funny subject. I know you're a bit sort of... Uh, well, it's just, it's just, I mean, the BNP have such an illogical argument, don't they? I mean, they want to repatriate, they want to say to all the Indian people, leave our country, yeah. but leave the recipe for the food. That's right. <laughs> all <laughs> fed in, well, make, to... make a load and we'll freeze it. The, the... <laughs> They are, they are trying to pass themselves off as a sort of legit part of me, very modern, up with it, with the times. They've got their own slogans, immigration, immigration, <laughs> immigration. And, uh, and, and they've done, like, focus groups. But I just wonder, what is a BNP focus group like? Because if it's a cross-section of the community, it will have blacks, gays and Asians in it, who yeah. presumably will all say to the BNP, but you're racist. <laughs> and then we'll just be chucked out. The strangest thing in the BNP, they actually have a Muslim candidate. Do they? Yeah, yeah, they have a guy. Yeah. He's, he's a white fella. He's, tr he's converted to Islam two years ago. Yeah. And he's obviously now campaigning for the BNP ticket, which I mean, all his compatriots. Yeah. He just basically wants a mosque on his own, doesn't he? <laughs> he just wants a big house in Bolton, wants it to be his own mosque. Is he any good at political argument? 
You should get him on. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what a twat. <laughs> How can you be a Muslim and who right. do you vote for? Hang on. I, I seem to remember that on Monday, Dominic, you were scared of making allegations against the IRA for your own personal safety. However, you're prepared to have a go at BNP Muslims. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, no. This, is a, this is a confused white bloke in Bolton who's oh, a right. primary school teacher. I'll take him oh, any day. I see. All right. <laughs> All right. OK, well, in, in a moment, while we're on the, the whole asylum issue, uh, I want to talk about a, a group who now know what it's like being a hated minority, and that's the Tory party. Um, <laughs> but first, our own controversial comedy prankster Mickey Dick is back with us tonight. Yesterday, he brought down the oil companies. Tonight, an even dirtier and darker institution is within his sights. The Catholic Church is in trouble over allegations that they're not reporting paedophile priests to the police. So, to see if they've tightened up on their rules, I've come to a church to confess. Confession time. Forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. I'm training to be a priest, and uh, I've been having thoughts of paedophilia. I see you. That's very good. Distressing for you? Yes, it is. Yes. I just don't know what to do. No, no. Um, well, it, it's good that you've come mm. to confess yourself. Yeah. Where's the seminary that, that you're studying? It's in... Margate. <laughs> and the father there is? Um, he's, 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 he's Stephen. Father Stephen. Father Stephen. Yeah. Have you any any point? Uh, have any desire to put into practice? God. Um. You're not going to tell anyone, are you? No, no. C could you just wait there a moment? Time, yeah. Yes. Okay. I won't be long. All right. Good. Uh, so, if I can have a moment of your time, um, the priest has called us with some very serious allegations against you. Just done a joke on on the priest, and it seems so to backfire. I don't share I mean, your you... sense of humour, sir. We have to treat situations like this very seriously. He, he said he wouldn't tell anyone. Oh well, swearing Ian Duncan Smith is under pressure to do well in tomorrow's local elections, uh, but he doesn't give good rallying cries to the troops. Here's a genuine example of his attempt at stirring words. I happen to believe this is the best time to be a Conservative in a generation. There is a vast number of people who have moved from being benefit of the doubt to undecided. And there's now a large proportion of undecideds who could vote Conservative. <laughs> hey? Dynamic. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, he is under a lot of pressure. I mean, he, he, another great rallying cry, he said, was he, in an interview today, he said that uh, at, when asked if he was going to stay on as Tory leader, if they do badly tomorrow, he said, it is my duty to lead the Tories into oh, the next election. Oh, he's a Tory election. leader, is he? Yes, he is, yes. You may have heard. I and, keep uh, seeing him and wondering what he's there for. You keep seeing him where? <laughs> Just in my local sauna, leave it. <laughs> <laughs> he's always referred to as IDS, isn't he? Which sounds like some sort of weapon system. <laughs> it does. With, yeah. Doesn't it, isn't it one of the things that prevents women having babies, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, he actually does. He? Yes, he does. <laughs> <laughs> He's got four of his own, but a lot of women have used him as a contraceptive. Oh, I bet they have, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, on that note, we'll, we'll leave part one. Coming in, part two of Gash, balloons and the Liberal Democrats. Meanwhile, in the Sunday Times Rich List, just published, Harry Potter author J.K. Rowling was declared even richer than the Queen. And that comes as no surprise when you see how popular her books actually are. Are they serious? Are they going to disarm? Are they going to comply? Uh, oh, Harry said, Dumbledore, yeah. you've been at Hogwarts yeah. for 40 years now. I said, i come to show you the Gaudiama spell. Welcome back to Wednesday night's Gash. Hey, it's Gash Wednesday. <laughs> um, uh, tomorrow's uh, local election day in Scotland, England, Wales, and to uh, talk to us about the Liberal Democrat position, I'm pleased to welcome the Lib Dem Parliamentary Chairman, Mark Oton, MP. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, my first question has to be, Liberal Democrats, who are you? What, I mean, what's, the po what's the point? Why what, do we do yes, it? Yes, why are you there? I should have no idea. I'm, I'm, <laughs> all, I'm, all, 
I don't know. I mean, we just want to be different, I guess, is the, the thing I'd say mostly. I get pretty fed up with the stale politics you've got. I just like to think the Lib Dems approach various issues from a slightly different way, a fresh way. And we're also prepared to say things sometimes which are a bit unpopular, perhaps, just because we believe in it. OK, well, you sort of, or your leader, courted unpopularity uh, in the build-up to the war. Mm -hmm. uh, but then, as soon as the shooting started, uh, he, he went very quiet on the subject. He, he said that, really, it was his responsibility to... Uh, not muddy the waters. Yeah, I mean, we had profound disagreements with the whole concept of yeah. bypassing the UN and all of that. But I think there's a general principle that once you've got troops out, don't undermine them. Don't you're not, them. You're not, Nick, you're not accusing the Liberal Democrats of plans to put mines under British forces. I think I heard it from the horse's mouth there. <laughs> But the question is that, I mean, morale within the British Army isn't going to suddenly plummet if they heard that Charles Kennedy was, uh, was speaking out against the war. No, I, I think they've probably got other things on their mind, haven't they? When yeah. there's bullets flying around, they're not actually going to be listening to, to Charles. But their relatives back at home do listen to Charles, and it's just important to make sure we get things right for them so that they don't feel that they're being undermined. But, but shouldn't there be an outlet for people who, who did genuinely think that the war was... There, was... there was a question mark over the legality of the war in the first place, and whether Britain should be you? committed to something that was, was a bit of a gamble. Yeah, but maybe the arguments about legality should happen in a couple of months' time. But the last thing you want when a war is going on is to worry about that. You want to make sure your troops are safe. You want to make sure they've got the equipment. You want to make sure the humanitarian aid is in place. But and those are the real issues, not having a endless lawyers arguing about whether or not... No, but it's legal. a very real issue. I mean, to say, to say that, uh, you know, I'm against the war, but once, the, once it's started, I'm all for it, is, is a bit like saying, you know, I'm against sodomy, but uh, if it's started, then, you know, <laughs> might as well, you know, you might turn up the music. <laughs> We're liberal, but we're not that liberal, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Where will the Lib Democrats be in four or five years? Where are we going to be in two years' time? Yeah. On the way to power. I mean, I absolutely believe there's a real chance of us getting into government. I wouldn't, why am I going to do this job if I'm just mm. going to hang around being in opposition? But you actually, you actually firmly believe that the Liberal Democrats will be in power pretty soon. How, how, how long do you give it? I reckon next election we can get to a point of overtaking the Conservatives. They're in absolute shambles. They're a dying party. We're on the way up. Once we've got into that credible position of being the main opposition, I think the floodgates can open. People will be fed up with Blair and they'll be looking for an alternative. Okay, so that's, that's the roadmap, <clears throat> if you like. All right, so your sort of campaigning slogan is, vote for us, we'll not be in power now. <laughs> vote for us, we'll get back to you. <laughs> your children, be... children may see a yes. <laughs> Prime Minister. <laughs> that would at least be honest, wouldn't it? Uh, yeah, it would be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Why go into every single election? All these politicians, we can use the bullshit word now because IDS is used. IDS today. is used. Why yeah. go in for all this bullshit saying we are definitely going to form a government? Yeah, skunk face tosser. That's another one. <laughs> 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 Sorry. <laughs> you become the second party, though, you'll get a better spot in the Commons, won't you? Because you're mm. always stuck down at the sort of toilet end. Because <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like the Tories get opposite the mace, the government opposite that, and then you guys are always sort of, can you budge up, Tories? <laughs> We get our own little box to stand at as well, dispatchable, yeah. and we sure? get a microphone. No, we don't in the moment. We get a microphone if we became opposition. Oh right. So have you got a little? Shout that might be better listen to us. Have you got a little mm. practice parliament in Lib Dem headquarters? <laughs> <laughs> okay, we've had our gun amnesty, but there's a further crackdown on crime tonight as we go over to WPC Flanagan for tonight's controversial swearing rap millionaire court roundup. Uh, appearing this week, bad motherfucker DJ charged with inappropriate gang signals, aggravated pussy, <laughs> aiming down some hot shit and concealing a gun in a bitch. <laughs> MC gagger bumps arraigned on charges of going equipped to motherfuck, um, poor gun angle and fag rage. Six pack Biggie Butlin contesting mischievous rap, pimp whacking and third degree gang, gang banging. <laughs> Calf Nigley appealing hip-hop community service order for bunch of non-dope beats and dick infringement. <laughs> Daddy long legs for bigging people up, asking everyone if they know what he means, slapping a homie upside his head and honking on a crack pipe. <laughs> Full kick mental blockhead suing for breach of bitch, pussy theft, actual bodily homie and non-display of tax disc. That's the uh, motherfucking lot. Big up, we out. <laughs> Ah. Well, thanks, WPC Flanagan. 
and thanks also to Ian Duncan Smith for helping us write that last item. Uh, we just want to end by uh, looking back at Blair's visit to Russia, because as Donald Rumsfeld, Rumsfeld flew in to mass applause from his own army, mm -hmm. Blair, yeah. <laughs> Blair chooses to visit the, the last person he'd want to meet, which is an opponent of everything he stands yes. for. He has this sort mm. of masochistic tendency. He likes Blair. to strap his knee Tony. Yeah. He likes going around the world getting into a fight. He's like an England football fan. He is. He is he's a suicide premier. Yeah. <laughs> I feel sorry for him, though, because he goes there to try and, you know, poor bloke, he's standing there live in front of the press. Yeah. And Putin almost did a bit of stand up. He said, Well, where is Sedan? Where are the weapons? <laughs> that must have been a very hard piece for the interpreter to translate. To say to Blair, yeah. He must have gone, Do you really want me to say that? <laughs> <laughs> and he could have put a different spin in it. Well, where is he then? <laughs> <laughs> is he in his bunker? <laughs> Well, old Tony's just standing there shit. <laughs> Translated back to Russian. Yeah. And Putin's just, standing there with the I'm not with this idiot t-shirt. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just like the idea that he stood there and he doesn't know what he's saying, so he's listening to Putin talking Russian, yeah. going, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> he said what? <laughs> I, feel, I, feel, I feel he's got... He's, he's a very... Uh, he runs his politics by a sort of moral code, and politics is not... No, no, he business. is a bit it's of an anomaly business. because um, whether or not you agree with him, he does, he does seem to base all his actions on having thought through the moral consequences of it. And mm. every other politician he meets Politi laughs at that notion. Especially in America. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, they are laughing. In, sorry, I was just, just yeah, in, in, in Washington, they are having a good laugh at Tony Blair. In the, in the Bush inner circle, this is absolutely true. Because why he's done what he's done. Because they're sort of thinking, but he's getting nothing out of yeah. it. <laughs> OK, uh, that's uh, just about it for Gash for tonight. As ever, we close with Graham, our topical balloonist. Graham, what have you got for us tonight? Good evening. Uh, tonight, um, I'm going to recreate the scene from I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here, The Crocodile Pit. <laughs> and I'm going to play the part of the crocodile. <laughs> <laughs> now, I know what you're thinking, but I'm not, all right? And I'm going to get Catalina. Here she is. This is Catalina. <laughs> A bit thicker than she is, but yeah. Well, someone <laughs> said she's had a boob job. <laughs> and uh, here we go. I'm going to be going along in the crocodile pit, and we're going to eat Catalina. Would you like a head nice first choice. or feet first? Oh, head first. Go ahead. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> help! Help! I'm a celebrity. Get me out of here! Help! 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 <laughs> That's it. Finished. <laughs> oh. Uh, thank you very much, Graham. Uh, that's all for Gash for tonight. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, my guests, Mark Holton, Nick Wilty, Dominic Holland. Uh, we'll be back uh, more or less the same time tomorrow. We've just heard that in the last dying seconds of the gun amnesty, uh, someone, John Prescott, has handed in his fist, and uh, <laughs> a thicko has handed in a GNU. Good night. <laughs> <laughs>